What's up guys, my name is Irina and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. So yes, I've decided to revisit the iPhone 8 Plus now in 2020. I think this phone has always been one of my favorite iPhone models of all time. And that's what makes this whole video so exciting and nostalgic to me. Back in 2017, I absolutely loved my iPhone 8 Plus, but I'm really curious to know how I'm gonna feel about this phone now in 2020. So let's get started and I want to relive the whole experience, so let's do some unboxing first. So yeah, this is a brand new unit, I got it in gold since it was the only available color at that moment and the next day the gold color got out of stock as well, so basically the iPhone 8 Plus is out of stock pretty often, so it's not that easy to get it these days. So as usual, in the box we get a pair of wired earbuds, then you get a 5 watt adapter and a cable. When it comes to build quality and the design of this iPhone, here we have the glass back and aluminum frame. Well, this color still looks pretty to me, but the first thing that strikes me is the bezels. After using the iPhone XS Max and the 11 Pro Max, these bezels really catch my eye, especially when they are white. I think the bezels are less noticeable when they are black, just like on the 8 Plus in the black color or on this second generation iPhone SE. But I'm really happy to see my favorite home button here, feels nostalgic. When it comes to the size of this phone, it's pretty much the same size as my 11 Pro Max, but it feels a little lighter. And the first thing I want to talk about is the display. This is a 5.5 inch LCD display. When it comes to brightness, I think it's easier to evaluate it when you compare it against other phones. So let's do a quick test and put it next to the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the newly released second generation iPhone SE. Unsurprisingly, the 11 Pro Max is the clear winner here, but I was just curious to know how big the difference in brightness would be. And as you can see, when it comes to how the A Plus compares to the iPhone SE, they look pretty much equal in terms of brightness. Apple claims that the max brightness on the 11 Pro Max is 800 nits and there are 625 nits on the 8 Plus as well as on the iPhone SE. And by the way, the iPhone 11 still has the same 625 nits of brightness, so if you're buying the iPhone 8 Plus in 2020, it won't feel like you're selling yourself short when it comes to display brightness. Despite the fact that the 8 Plus is obviously dimmer than the 11 Pro Max, I still think the display on this phone is bright enough. When I use the 8 Plus indoors, I never have to keep the max brightness, it's usually about 70 to 80 percent. When it comes to how sharp this display is, let's zoom into the text and see. And I would say the display on the 8 Plus looks as sharp as the one on the 11 Pro Max. And by the way, I was really surprised to stumble upon the fact that the pixel density on the display of the 8 Plus is actually higher than the one on the iPhone 11. And when it comes to overall display colors, just like on any iPhone with the LCD display, the colors look slightly less contrasty and vibrant than on the iPhone iPhone with the OLED display. Also, when you're looking at the A Plus from an angle, you get an obviously dimmer viewing experience when compared to the OLED display. And having been used to OLED displays, I think it would be hard for me to go back to an LCD display, but a fun fact, when I used the iPhone 8 Plus on a daily basis back in 2017, I don't remember myself ever complaining about the display quality. My point is, guys, you can get used to everything. We have the True Tone feature on the iPhone 8 Plus, which I personally like and always keep it on. And the thing is, when this phone was released, there was no dark mode. So now I would definitely enjoy using this phone more than back in 2017 because I'm a fan of the dark mode and of course it's enabled on my phone 24-7. The good thing is that we have the 3D Touch feature on the 8 Plus, while newer iPhone models don't have it. I'm pretty sure many of you guys don't care about it, but I always like this feature and it's a little sad that I don't have it now on my 11 Pro Max. Next, let's talk about the battery of this phone. We have a 2691 mAh battery on the iPhone 8 Plus. It takes about 3 hours to fully charge this phone with the included 5 watt adapter and about 1 hour and 50 minutes with the Apple 18 watt adapter which you would have to buy separately. And also the good thing is that this phone supports wireless charging. 
When it comes to the battery life of the iPhone 8 Plus, this phone can easily last me through the day. By the way, the battery life on the 8 Plus is so much better than on the newly released iPhone SE, which could hardly last me through the day. But at the same time, of course, the 8 Plus cannot beat the 11 Pro Max, which usually lasts me about two days. However, I think in 2020, the phone that can last you through the day is still considered to be good in terms of battery life. And now let's talk about the speakers of the iPhone 8 Plus and check the sound quality. I remember that back in 2017 I really liked the sound quality on this phone and now I would say it's still pretty good but comparing it to the 11 Pro Max I have to admit that the sound on the 8 Plus seems a little bit hollow. However, I would have to say that the overall sound quality still seems pretty decent to me. When it comes to security features and biometrics, we only have the Touch ID on the iPhone 8 Plus. There is no Face ID, which surprisingly doesn't seem to bother me at all. I immediately got used to this home button again and the Touch ID still feels really useful and convenient. Honestly, using this phone, I don't feel like I miss the Face ID. However, the only time when I regret not having it is when I sign into my bank apps that support the Face ID to log in because it's more secure than the Touch ID. And now let's talk about the camera of the iPhone 8 Plus. We have a dual 12 megapixel camera on this phone, the main camera and the telephoto camera. It's been a while since I did my camera test between the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone XS Max. So far we've had numerous software updates on this phone, so I'm really curious to see how the camera on the iPhone 8 Plus performs now. And by the way, I'm working on my dedicated camera camera comparison videos, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I want to share with you some of the things I've noticed about the camera app on the 8 Plus. The first thing that caught my eye is that you still cannot change the resolution of the video and frames per second right in the camera app like on the newer iPhone models. You still have to go to the camera settings. Also, you don't get these composition features that allow you to capture photos and videos outside the frame. And of course, there is no night mode on the 8 Plus. When it comes to the front-facing camera, we have a 7 megapixel camera on the 8 Plus. It takes pretty good selfies, even though they look less crisp when compared to the 11 Pro Max. Also, there is no portrait mode on the selfie camera. And speaking of the video, you can only shoot videos in 1080p at 30 frames per second. Being objective, I have to admit that the camera on the iPhone 8 Plus is weaker than the newer iPhone models in terms of hardware and software, but still, I must say that this phone takes pretty decent photos and videos, so I think the camera on the iPhone 8 Plus is still pretty good in 2020. We have the A11 Bionic chip on the 8 Plus. Overall, this phone feels really fast and zippy, and I would say it doesn't feel like a three-year-old chip at all. So guys, this these are my impressions and thoughts about the iPhone 8 Plus now in 2020. Honestly, I was pleasantly surprised with this phone. I must say my initial expectations were lower. I think the only thing that I don't like about the iPhone 8 Plus now is huge bezels. They make this phone look old and outdated. Also, when you're comparing this phone to the newer 11 Pro Max, you realize that the display is not that good, but at the same time, when you start using this phone on a daily basis, you can really complain, since the overall performance of the iPhone 8 Plus is pretty good. Please share your experience with this phone if you own it now. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and see you in the next one!